man. There's nothing to worry about. We're going to find music for the beginning of the yeah, show. Yeah, we really do. I really, really do. <laughs> we'll find music. It'll be good. Yeah. So, hello. 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 Hello, everybody. Hi. And welcome to another episode of Whiskey Untitled. All righty. Yeah. Um, hey, so this guy over here is Wally Sniff. And that guy over there is the drinking cable. Yeah, I know that weird one with the nose was kind of awkward, so. <laughs> I liked <laughs> I it. That was fun. But this, I mean, I guess I could make a unibrow. There you go. No, oh, other way. I'll call it, call it the Charles Unibrow. Yes. Charles Drinking Caveman, yes. as you noted. And, uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about, um, I guess you could call it whiskey, um, what would it be the best word? Not, not just a glass of accessories. accessories. Yeah. Whiskey accessories, things that you use around when you're drinking whiskey, not just, you know, the liquid itself. Um, but before that, um, since it's a drinking show, let's uh, jump into what we're drinking. So, Wally, what are you having in your glass? This is the delicious McAllen Cast Strength. And uh, if you want to win some, you can go to Whiskey With A View. And Whiskey With A View's Instagram page has totally amazing things. Yep. Like right now, all the bloggers got together and decided that we were going to give away stuff. So I have a brand new bottle of Cast Strength. Two scotch and sniff glasses and a Pappy Van Winkle cigar um, all to give away. So that's going to be in the package. I think 10 bucks gets you yep. in for the donations. All the donations go to the Houston Food Bank. Yes, they do. Is that yep. right? So uh, right here. Okay, so yeah. Right there it there says go. the Harkin Harvey that's Relief it. right there. $10 donated. I did mine today. Swiped up on your uh, Instagram feed. So yeah, Whiskey with the Views got on his link. Just tap it in above and tap it and uh, donate. It's a great cause. Well, I'll jam, dude. Hey, John, dude. Yeah, it's an awesome cause. So, like, uh, just, yeah, no, 10 bucks gets you in, and then it gives you a chance. Every $500, we give away another blogger's package, and it's going to be cost- good. Awesome. Yeah, I, good and I awesome. I think it's at uh, 1400 right now, the last time I checked. So, is it? Only 1400 yeah. Oh, we're so close to the next yeah, one. Yeah, so I'm just saying, guys, that's already, what, three packages already? So, yeah. come on, guys, let's, let's keep going. Let's try to get up. Um, we'll be promoting as much as we can, I know, on our Instagrams as well and on the show. So, yeah. That's the best way to do Alrighty. it. Wait, are you giving away a package too? I am not, sadly. So I think it's just... Oh, okay. I, I'm assuming maybe down the road someone, he might ask out. So it seems... Whiskey Nate asked for like a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. So, so. we'll see. And then um, for we'll me, see. I got... Um, where is the bottle? Oh, I can't find it anymore. I guess I put it back up there. It's the Westland uh, barrel fill, uh, hand-filled barrel. Um, let me grab it real quick. It is barrel 730 in a toasted, extra toasted barrel. Um, they do whiskeys not bourbons, so it's kind of a Scottish style. I guess you got like American Scottish style, American whiskeys. So yeah, um, bottle number 730, or cast number 730. I filled this in a couple of months ago, which is kind of a fun experience. And uh, Wally, I know you've gone to a few uh, whiskey tours in Scotland. They do the hand fills, right? Heck yeah. Yeah. That's like part of the best part of the tours. Old Pulteney, I got like a nice 20 year. Then uh, Glenn Fittick did the hand bottle. Then where else? Like I don't know. There are a couple other places. So many hand bottles to man. I'm thinking about but it. No, it's it's a fun oh, experience. Um, for me, you know, the first real bottling I was doing it was just fun. Just you know, the person was there was telling the story, what kind of barrel it was, um, you know, how long it was there for. You get to write your name in the lot in the in the ledger, write the bottle number yep. on it. So it's kind of a fun <clears> experience just to see how it goes. So yeah, no, this is nice, toasty. It definitely reminds me of a bourbon, but um, I guess a bit lighter than it. So yeah. Oh, the donations are at seventeen twenty six now. Ooh, Thank you, Jeremy. Seventeen twenty six. So there. Yes. Wow, that's a big. So jump. third package has been released. We're halfway to the fourth package. There you go. So, so. does he? Um, do they donate them every time, or is it once the final tally is done, then he starts giving it out to let everyone know? I think once the final tally is done, he's gonna mail all of us the addresses we need to mail our packages to, and then we're gonna send them all out. Oh, so, I think that's what's going and on. And I'm assuming they wouldn't know. Would they know that they won, or they wouldn't know that they won? uh i don't know so, i'll have to, to i'll have to message him and ask because yeah. i can't remember if he was doing it per package or if we we're doing it all at the end at one time gotcha so yeah um yeah please feel free to donate um again this is in october 2017 so for anybody in the future um just to let you know it might be closed by then but please please feel free to donate um take a look at whiskey nate's um link if it's a different link then uh it's over so <laughs> just let everyone know um yeah so uh Let's see what you got. Uh, what do you get in the package today? Did you get anything fun, exciting? Uh, just one bottle this week. I went out and picked up a bottle of what did you get? Balvenie Peat Week. So it's the Peat Week 14, which, uh, again, I have such bad experiences on Bourbon R 
with uh, weird things. But I, I posted a picture that I posted on from Scotch and Sniff earlier this week where I posted the 14 peat week next to the 17 peated cask. And I was like, oh, these are the two peated that I've had from Valveni. And some guy was like, oh, they taste totally different. And I was like, I literally tasted them side by side the other day, and they're a lot closer than you think. Mm. And he was like, no way. I was like, no, no, this is my picture. I This is literally my living room. <laughs> mm. He was just telling me because somebody else told him something. Oh. And so I don't, I don't know. That's not how whiskey works. Like whiskey works. You drink it. You make a decision for yourself. Yeah. And you grow. No, I agree. Um, definitely. I, I haven't had the chance yet. I definitely want to do something like that in the future, especially with the peat one. So maybe one day. But like you said, it, then again, all the different factors could you know factor in, right? You got time, how long the bottle's been opened, how much is left. But, of course. but for us, you know, peat would be uh, the forefront, so it can make sense if it tastes pretty similar, at least. Yeah, and Balvenie does it a little bit lighter than your Lafroig, so you're not going to like, oh my gosh, if you love Lafroig or Ardbeg, you're not going to be like, I need Balvenie 14 peat week. But you probably will be like, oh, this is this is quite enjoyable for a space eater. Okay. Yeah, no, um, it's great. Uh, any other things, or is that it, or... <laughs> That's the only thing I picked up this week. I'm Ooh, actually waiting for some things. Yeah, you. you know, being being a bit tame today. <laughs> so, um, for me, what I picked up where's that bottle? I picked up a toasted barrel. I posted on my Instagram. Um, I was I picked one that earlier because I I was going to give it to my friend. I was like, hey, let me let me try and keep it. And I'll try to find another bottle. So, um, everyone's been saying great things about this. Um, I'm a big rye fan, so I'm really hoping that this um exceeds expectations. I do know that a lot of people compare it to the Booker's Rye, which I'm hoping um, Wally might send me one day. So I'll definitely do a side-by-side -side <laughs> on these guys for that. And then um, I'm actually thinking about doing a side-by-side -side with all the Michter's Rye's I have. I have the 10-year, I have the um, Barrel Proof, and I also have the Toasted one now. So I'll probably do a three-flight. Uh, please wait for that soon. I can't wait to do that one. So yeah. And that's, to be honest, I've been a bit tame as well this week. I'm... To be honest, I'm trying to cut down on the amount of bottles I have. I think uh, Wally knows. I'm like, hey, I need to limit. I had a party this weekend, and everyone went into my room, and we're like, wow, that's a lot. And I'm like, oh, when people say that a lot, that means you might have a problem or, you know. No, that's, beginning. that's why I don't invite people in my room. Fair enough. No, <laughs> it's kind of one of the staples. My wife just goes, hey, look at all the whiskey my husband has. Tell him he's doing too much. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Yeah. But hey. Well, she, I mean, if she's coaxing them and leading, you know. Yeah. You, you, just, you just protest. You'd be like, Your Honor, she's leading the witness. Yep, no, for sure. <laughs> she's, she's trying to tell me that hinting and like, maybe you should buy some more wines. I'm like, I'll buy some wine finished whiskeys. Maybe. You just tell her, maybe I'll hold you in contempt of yeah. court. How about that lady? Ooh, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> she wears yeah, pants. Probably. She runs the house. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's get into um, the whiskey accessories part of the, the show. <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah. Let's go two for two. So two, you, two, me. How about that? Okay, sure. All yeah, right. No, that so works. Uh, up for you is. Uh, I'll do two glasses right off yeah, the bat, and that'll make life a lot easier. So uh, the first one is the Norlin glass, which is super popular. It comes in a balvany sized um, container, you know, and it looks, you know, like a double walled glass. Actually, the inside glass kind of looks like a soda mm -hmm. container at the bottom of it. It's kind of weird. Uh, it it has such a thick lip on it for drinking that it, it's not enjoyable. And I know a lot of people, I don't know, I know a lot of people might like it. But personally, in terms of looking for something that I can use to drink and taste, you can pour so little in this for it to do the aerating process that it, it makes no offense to the guy who invented the Norland glasses that I paid way too much for. But it, it just doesn't make any sense. So the other glass that doesn't make sense that I don't think, again, whiskey accessories, I'm going to start with two that just don't make sense. Uh, the other one is a whiskey neat glass, which a lot of people swear by this. It's shaped like a uh, like a piss pot or one of those, you know, like a spittoon that you would spit your, you know, <laughs> your tobacco in. But uh, it's supposed to have like this magical effect where like somewhere in the middle of this is like this beautiful nose that gets sprinkled in. And all of a sudden you can like smell, you know, I don't know, the the palm fronds of the smallest nuances. But it's I don't know. It's not good. And when you go to drink from it because the lips so wide, it just spills all over your face. So, yeah, starting with those two. Not so good for the whiskey accessories. Honestly. Yeah, so uh, just to go back to so the Norland glass, um, I was messaging Scotch for everyone today, and he posted one of his ones where it has a blacked out one. Look really, really cool. I was like, oh, that looks awesome glass. But then I'm like, yeah, but then you can't see the whiskey. What's the point? Yeah. And then now when you say to me that, hey, it doesn't really work, like it's like, what, a half a shot or something? Or a shot, maybe? Yeah, it's it's a tiny amount. Like maybe, maybe somewhere between a quarter and a half an ounce. It's tiny. Yeah, no, I, I just think that 
that's kind of a waste. Like, I've been seeing people where they're like, oh, yeah, it aerates it. It makes it smell different. Oh, it's a better experience. I'm like, really? Or was it the marketing and all that kind of shit? So. Yeah. When you see people pour their whiskey up to like here in their Glen Cairns, those are not the same. Like those are not the people who they buy this to look fancy. Yeah. They don't buy this because like, oh, this glass works so beautifully because it, it takes so little. If you look for the dimples on the inside, like this is how far down my finger has to go yeah. for you to get to the dimples where they end. So, I mean, you can fit almost nothing in it. Yeah. I mean, the the concept, again, is great, but application is just rough. Yeah, I definitely see people with a Glen Cairns glass. It's like all the way past the bulb and you're like. Man, does that even do anything? I'm like, I think it, Those it's a like hashtag drinking, man not tasting. pour, right? So I'm like, damn, you're just drinking it, man. You're not really tasting Yeah, like you said, you're not tasting it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, eh, to each his own, right? True story. All right, so um, for me, let's go into glasses, I guess. So um, I know we'll talk about Glen Cairn later. Let's go for the two glasses that I use the most when it comes to bourbons is basically standard rocks glass. So an old-fashioned glass. Um, this one is a high west one, but, um, I just like something. So for me, when it comes to the, the old fashioned glasses, double old fashioned is kind of the key and then the solid base. So if you're mixing drinks or anything like that, if you're mixing drinks in a glass, having a solid heavy base, like this glass is heavy as hell. This is, this is the perfect one for it. So it's my little cock, oh, uh, cocktail, sorry. Uh, old fashioned rocks glass. And then the second one is a bit new. So this is the bourbon trail. Um, official bourbon shell glass. Ooh. So this one here, the reason behind, it, of course, has got the bulb, so it funnels the the aromas, but it's got a wider opening than the Glen Claren, if you can see. So the reason for this is most of your bourbons are a lot higher than your sco- uh, higher proof than your scotches, so you don't want to burn your noses. So I see people, and uh, while well, you can test this, like they just dip their nose in there, and then it's like, oh, I just get alcohol, like. There's a reason why it's funneling it straight there. So this one kind of dissipates it a little bit, allows you to kind of nose it better, um, especially for um, things around the 90 to 100 plus, more like 120 proof, like your George D. Staggs, um, your Stag Juniors, you got, um, what else, your Elijah Craig, the Battle of Wild, those kind of things. It works really well in these. Um, I don't really think it's a gimmick. It's more of just another way to drink things, and it's using the same kind of method of just funneling things to your nose with a wider opening. So yeah, that's what I have. Sweet fancy Moses. Yep, yeah. <clears throat> All right, and then I guess uh, you want to do two yeah, more. Yeah, let's do class. I still got a few more glasses over here, so I'll go two more that are related to glass things. The awesome. last glass I'll talk about is the Copeda. Yep. Everybody loves the Copeda because it's such a. I mean, it's essentially the Glen Cairn nose and shape of the tulip, and then you know, just with a classic base. Oh, oh, oh! Talk about your Copeda. Sorry, I didn't no, even no, see no. that. No, no, no. You that's go first, and I'll, I'll talk. No, about. you sure? That's the one to talk about. All right, fine. That's so um, here is the uh, what is it? Single Mode Alliance. Um, his cup of glass. He's a big fan of this glass, and I'm becoming one. Um, so here he d- he donates seven dollars for every glass sold, and he just got in stock today. I just confirmed it. Um, so it's the tenth, October three today. He just restocked. So if you guys are interested, I'm not sure what the retail price. Is. I think it's like fourteen bucks or something like that, or. Someone correct me, but it's twenty two dollars and then twenty one ninety nine with seven dollars going towards a uh, charity. There you fund. go. So twenty one bucks. For, that's for, not that bad. Hey, and he's he's donating his own seven dollars from all this stuff to um, a refugee family that he's been hosting for a while now. So yep. and they don't even know anything about it. And I don't think they're gonna watch the show. But hey, that's what they're gonna get. And um, I can't wait for him to do the big reveal. I hope he yeah, streams it live and stuff like that. And I've been seeing some great um, responses around the Instagram community. So. If you guys have bought one already, thank you guys so much. Uh, you know, this is great to see the whole community getting together around something like this. So, yeah. But um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just I had it. I just wanted to show it. So. Oh no, that's the good one. I'm telling you, I need to order a couple of those myself. Those are the good ones. But like, uh, yeah, no, the cup of glass. It's classic. Everybody knows. You know, the Richard Patterson of Dalmore, throwing out the extra whiskey and then smelling it and shoving his nose in it. Get to know it. Hello, how are you? You know yeah. that kind of thing. So. Everybody knows that. And then uh, the next accessory that I'm throwing out there is a water dropper. Hmm. There are all kinds of water droppers. This one is one I stole from a Balvenie event, which I've actually talked to the people from Balvenie, and it's pretty common that people go to the events and just hawk them. So it's got a classic dropper like you'd see for like a science kit or something like that. Uh, McAllen has droppers, and I didn't bring one with me. I may have stolen a package full of them because they were like, oh, we have hundreds left. And I was like, I'll take 20. Um, But they're just droppers that are shaped like pipettes. And on the end, you just hold your finger over it. And that's enough to, you know, act as like like you would with a straw. And then you just pull out whatever. 
And you're good to go. Makes sense. Drop some water in there. No, I think that's great. Yeah. And when people say, oh, you always have your whiskey neat. No, it's, it's up to whatever you want to do. And, you know, yeah. try, try it, it every way. I always suggest first is, hey, if you're paying money for it or anything like that, just try it neat. If it's too much, add some water. Do it as much as you want. I would suggest drops at a time because you some whiskeys you can't overpower with water and it did dilution and it's kind of uh, you kind of waste the money. So yeah, I just say take, take your time. You know, I think it's great to have a dropper. Um, if not, a straw does well too. Um, try not to freehand it; it's a bit harder. But um, definitely, you know, just try it with a couple drops. Oh, first. pro tip. Yeah. Uh, this is weird. If you have a water bottle. Yeah. And you don't want to pour from the water bottle in there because you'll get too much in there. Take the cap and actually pour water into the cap and then just put a little bit into your glass. Works like oh, a charm. There you go. Yeah, it's a quick pinch, right? Just in case it's water bottles everywhere, right? So that's great. Yep. Um, so. Yeah. So let's – okay, I'll go into a few more glasses. How about that since I got a few right now? Sounds like a plan. All right. So for here, I got a couple more. Um, I got a cordial glass. So I was using this a lot to start – before I found out about the Copita glass, just because it has that bulb shape and it's easier for me to funnel through my nose, just kind of the same thing. It doesn't hold as much, and there is a problem with this one. And, you know, people, you know, any glass works, but um, this one here, the issue is that sometimes you get that little boot kind of thing, so you can pour a bit more out. So, yeah, got one of those, and that was I was using a lot. It was just easier. I didn't want to warm up my whiskeys, so that's kind of where I went. And then, the Canadian glass. So this one here, same kind of thing with the, where is it? The bourbon trail glass. This one holds a lot more liquid, but it's got the same kind of notion, funnels things through your nose and allows it a little tip there. So as again, just be careful. Sometimes you can over pour it yourself, but um, yeah, it's nice. It's uh, it's kind of like the same size as a rocks glass, but um, yeah. Got the Canadian ones. You gotta gotta put them in there. And then last glass. I'm sorry, man. I'm talking about three. <laughs> is a um, insulated glass. So I have a few of these. Um, I'm I like I said before. I don't like warming up my whiskeys. So having an insulated type glass. This is a fancy Bowden one, but um, it just helps me out. I don't like to warm it. And then if I do, there you go. So yeah. We should we should totally do some experiments with whiskeys because the effects of it being let's say frozen. Yep. Versus it being chilled, versus it being room temperature, versus it being warm. Oh, that'd be fun. And see, uh, see how it affects the flavors. Yeah, that'd be real cool. And to be honest, like, I, it might be just my mind, but just for me, like, it's not what I like to do. So. No, it makes a difference. They've proven that. It's just like because so when it gets cold and it's non chill filtered, yeah. you have all the fats inside of the whiskey that are actually starting to congeal and you know collect themselves, and that's where you get those little like specks and things in your whiskey. So that, I mean, that affects the flavor. It's like chefs say all yeah. the time, like fat is flavor. That is true. All right, so uh, what do you got? Anything else to ask, sir? Oh, the other two things. Uh, these are more for making cocktails, yeah. even though I don't make cocktails a lot. But a jigger, this is like you can't live without a jigger. That is true. Because it's got uh, one ounce on one side, one and a half ounce on the other side, and it's just great for measuring anything and everything. Trust me, you try to make a cocktail. It's a lot of fun. And then a muddler. This thing is amazing because you just take it crush whatever in like one of those rocks glasses that you mo- or, uh, that, that <laughs> Charles I want to say Charles that that uh, drinking game man was just talking about you just crush it into the bottom of one of those rocks glass and you can muddle up you know lemons limes mints you name yeah. it and you just put it together it just it just brings the whole thing together it's really nice but cheap accessories they were great yeah no I think uh, was it a lot of people use it for um, like the bad old fashions when they used to muddle stuff back in the day or just getting some oranges zests out and stuff like that. A lot of people use it with cherry smashing and stuff like that. So that a bit of a cherry mm-hmm. flavor. So yeah, no, I think it's great. Um, it's a new sport. Cherry smashing. Yeah. Just check it on uh, ESPN. <laughs> the Ocho. Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, just like the dropper, I got a little crystal water pourer. Um, it's more of a fancy kind of thing. It's like, Ooh, you, you show your, um, your Glencairn glasses and bam, there you go. We got a little water. Um, but water having check. water with your whiskey is always helpful. I always like that kind of, you know, just trying to experiment. You know, a lot of people don't like um, higher proof uh, bourbon. So I say, hey, add a little bit of water and stuff like that and see how it is. And usually mellows out for people. Usually if people say, hey, it's a, I'm for Stag Junior, I'm a two dropper. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, that kind of stuff. So i gotten used to that. And then um, I have a little decanter here. So um, does everyone loves or hates them? Um, for me personally, it's more of a necessity just because I do a lot of barrel aging stuff. So right here, I have my rum age maker's mark that sadly Wally did not like. So I have that in here. 
Uh, and then, yeah, a lot of people say that it changes the flavor. I think it's more oxidation than anything. But, um, yeah, I just have them here. It's a nice, fancy way of showing people, hey, you care about your whiskeys and stuff like that. And plus, you don't want to show them the bottle. Just like, hey, take a guess what this is. You know, is it a scotch? Is it a bourbon? It's kind of a blind tasting kind of thing, too. Mm, it's always fun. No, I, I, that's what I definitely want to get into now with more blind tastings and stuff. What, blind tasting? Yeah. Heck yeah, blind tasting is uh, where the fun's at. And then, do you have anything else, or do I keep going on? No, I actually have uh, nothing. What? Oh, come on, man. You got one of these, don't what you? What can I say? All you need. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, yes. I also have this. So I got one of these whiskey books. Um, it's one of the quick runs that I did. It just take you down notes. Uh, when I go to parties or when I go to bars, especially if I don't think I'm going to try this again, I usually bring a notepad or actually I bring this. So it's a nice way to show, hey, call, uh, basically a flavor wheel, show what types of flavors. So right here you got linger, balance, legs, so on and so forth. Have a little notes area for your nose, palate, and so on. And then um, just a whiskey name, when you tried it, and what you rated it at this time. I actually have two books side by side. Um, one's where I do them blind, and then I go back to my book to see what I do. So let's say I rated this one blind as a four star, but maybe when I saw the label and stuff, I rated it two stars. So it's kind of like, oh, I got the same flavors, but I liked it at this time and not what did I have before that. So nice way to jump I mean, there's so... There's so many factors that go into that, yeah. though. You have to think about the other things you ate that day. You have to think about the other whiskeys that you've drinking that day because it's going to, you know, your palate, it gets worn out. It's like anything yeah. else. And I mean, there's so many factors put in there. The weather, the barometer, like the pressure, no joke, the air pressure, like all these things will affect what you're smelling and how you smell it. Yeah. So to, to have a whiskey that you say you love is one thing because it's probably statistically the mo more times that you go back to it, you just happen to catch it. Yeah at either the right times or, you know, whatever it may be that causes you to like it so much. Or it may just be full of the flavors that you like all the time. And there are some that, like, you like them sometimes, and then every once in a while you pick it up and you're like, why, why am I drinking yeah. this? No, like, so I had the Vino Barrique a couple of de uh, weeks ago, and, like, I had it for the second time again. And I'm like, yeah, I picked up a lot more different flavors than I did. It was the yeah. last one in my fl in my tasting flight, so it's like, hey, my tongue was probably dead or whatever. But it's, it hasn't lived up to the hype yet, but then again, I haven't sat down and actually really, you know, studied it i guess you yeah that's one you but yeah that's definitely one you have to sit down with and just like you can't let other things distract you it's a good just starter yeah. and finish yeah like what wally just said let it, right let it, it takes it, different things what do you have in a day what's your mood like even stuff like that so they key factors yeah, i mean that's always fun to do like if you if you eat something before you start to drink some whiskey <laughs> i remember trying this one time me and my brother were sitting down and we were going to review some whiskey and we ordered thai and we ordered some very hot thai like i love drunken noodles extra spicy which will burn your face off and so that's what i did i ate a bunch of thai the first whiskey that i remember trying to take a sip of i just couldn't drink it because it just tasted like you know fire and tasted like peppers and none of that was stuff that the whiskey would taste like normally but the thai food was just over overwhelming yeah no i definitely see that and then um, the next one for me is coasters. I am one of those guys, and plus my wife gets mad at me if I don't put things on the coasters. So I have coasters <laughs> around. Um, here's my drinking caveman from Coaster Connoisseurs on Instagram. And here's another one, leather one I did. Oop, there it is. So, yeah. Little logo. Where's the light? Know, like, Where's where the, light? the light? Go. That's the best way. But, yeah, having coasters there, I know that's kind of a small thing, but, you know, definitely your table's appreciated. You just put them, put them next to your face. Yeah. That's the best place so, to put uh, them. The light's going to be best. So, like Mickey Mouse? What yours? There you go. Put them there in your ears. Done. done. Done and done. Alrighty. <laughs> so um, I think that's it for our top. Oh, actually, wait. We haven't talked about the the number one glass that we use all the time. So Wally. Oh, Glen yep. Cairn, without there a doubt. Go. Glen Cairn. I mean, everybody knows this. It's got a heavy, solid base. It's made out of crystal. It's German. They're awesome. Uh, I I love the Glen Cairn glass just because it does a really good job of concentrating all the flavors and everything together. One thing I do wish they had is I wish they had black Glen Cairn glasses. But to get them in black crystal, I've talked to Glenn Karen before. They said it would be like 40 pounds a piece, and that's not going to work for me. So I don't know, man. Maybe, uh, maybe a special order. I'll, I'll chip in for it. I, I would do it for a special order, but like that'd be one glass for me or two glasses for a matching set. That's oh, it. Because yeah. can you imagine? That'd be $110 yeah. for two glasses. Uh, and that's just, I don't know, that's that'd wild. Be fancy. Like, I would probably do it. <clears throat> depends how dark it would be. I don't know how dark black crystal is, but. I don't know. Yeah, you've seen black crystal before. It almost has like a, it's like a dark, dark, dark bluish tint. I'm just wondering, like, it's like has a, it changed the color of the whiskey? Because then I'm like, oh, I don't know if I would spend that much money on it. But well, the color of the whiskey is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Shimon would chip in. But like, I, I really but, think that'd be really cool though, especially having like a side by side or a test flight. Special, heck yeah, special whiskeys. It, 
Yeah, it takes the color away. It means you can't go, I wonder if this is European oak or if this is American oak. All that's gone. And you're just drinking whiskey. What I'm also thinking about is like, you know those hatched um, versions of the Glencairn? I want one of those. And I know you have one, oh, yeah. but I want... I Probably not with the, with the logo you, on it. You can order those on Amazon. Yeah. They have the, the cut crystal okay. ones. Yeah, oh, yeah. I want to get one of those. They look really fancy too. For cheaper than a $50,000 bottle of Balbeni. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Alrighty, so um, this is the time where we... Uh, bring it up to the chat and if uh you guys have any questions or anything like that uh let us know and if not we're just gonna ramble on on something else so um i guess it looks like we're rambling on ramble on all right so um right now i'm trying to figure out what my focus is so um while i just you and me talking here you know no one else right i got scotch and bourbon i know you're gonna say right but i just don't know where to where to go next right so i got the belvini line the orangey line um i what do you, see? You're saying you have those lines, but I mean, like, I have 15 Glenmorangies. They're all different, and I can't say I have their that's, line. No, that's true. But like, I've I've got the most of what I want. Like the the, the core range. How about that? Sounds better. The core range. Okay. What's the next core I mean, range, or something that's weird or different that most people don't have that it's easy to find yet no one's really tried? Do you know? I know putting you on the spot. Old, old Pulteney. If I had to say it, and not just because I went to their distillery and loved it, but like, they're 12. They're 17. They're 21. I can't. Like, all of them are good. Oh, those are good suggestions, too. Shimon makes a good point. Uh, Glenn Farkless and Aberlauer. I can say the same for both of those, yeah. especially Aberlauer. Aberlauer, I can see that. Like, Aberlauer, they're they're 16. They're 18. They're they're 12. All of them taste awesome. And on top of that, the Abunid, you know, just to top it yeah. all off, which is just ridiculously the, the, one of the best cherry bombs. what's funny is I actually don't see a lot of their Insta- or Instagram presence or, you know, um, the kind of online <laughs> no, sp- presence sp- on the um, Aberlauer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, they're you know it's it's funny because they're they're so awesome and then they're weird side yeah. note they're also down the street from Gunfarkless so like you pass Aberlauer right after you pass like the Walker cookies mm-hmm. which are like this like the biscuits yeah. and then like you go up the road and it, there's Gunfarkless so it's like all the sherry bombs are like on this sherry, trail yeah. right there so it's like sherry bombs awesome. or something like that heck yeah no I, I somebody needs a patent that. that, that's funny though I don't, I just don't see them like I see Glen uh, Glen Fittich really big on instagram right now mckellen you know those guys but i just don't see abelard i'm a big fan of the abana so you have to think so you have to think glenfiddich is the number one selling single malt whiskey so william grant and sons has a giant presence and they have the ability to have these giant sales and huge marketing you know it's the same thing for most of these companies but some of them are so small when you go to the distillery it's three four dudes running the distillery (laughs) how are you going to have that kind of presence if you have three or four dudes who are running the whole distillery how big is your pr team like it's not going to be big, and that's the thing. They rely on people like micro influencers and and people like that who are writing reviews to to do the essentially the heavy yeah. work. I mean, I get emails from a couple of different organizations all the time that are talking about, oh, this is a new bottle coming out. Oh, this is a new this. Oh, this is a new that. And you know, on one hand, it's like, yeah, I could be like one of those whiskey news guys who posts about that all the time, but I'd rather have the bottle in hand yeah. so I can tell you about it. No. Like old Pulteney, they have like no ad. Their advertising, it, it feels like a lot of the same pictures over and over again yeah. on Instagram. But I'm telling you, like, once you try the 21, you'll be like, okay, okay. like, this just made it to my top shelf, and it tastes awesome. Right. I got to, you know, find it's just, then. oh, it's so good. Yeah. But like, that's just one of the brands that, that does that. There are so many though. I, I find myself attracted to those brands. That's the problem. Yeah. No, I agree. Like, I, I mean, Bal Blair's. Like, I like going to like more of the American distilleries right now, the smaller ones that I don't see that much of, and I'm like, hey, what are you guys doing? What's happening? Because I want to know what's happening in the grassroots in America right now. Like those kind of like. Wesson's kind of over, you know, outgrown the craft distillery stage. I think. I think they're more on that. Hey, where we, you, everyone knows who we are. But what about those ones that are down south and all that kind of stuff, or the Texas ones that are yeah. doing, um, was it blue corn and all that kind of stuff? The weird different. Oh, stuff. balconies. Yeah. Well, balconies they're is pretty, pretty big, big now. now too. But you oh. the other ones too. Two yeah. things. One, Dram Dude Springbank. No, like I've had one Springbank I liked, and it was from the distillery. It was like their eight year, and that was awesome. Their eight year cast strength, but everything else they have. You have to be a Pete lover. And then uh, what Shimon just said about uh, Glenn Farkless being under Grant and Sons, William Grant and Sons is not the same as John Grant and Sons, which are two different organizations. I got that confused a lot while I was in Scotland, too, which made me sound like an idiot a bunch of times at each of the distilleries. <laughs> but, hey, it's whatever. Fair you enough. just go to have fun, right? Yeah, no. Um, anything else, guys, um, down there in the chat? Anything happening? It's not most. Drams dude's competing with me. He's saying it's not the Pete. It's not that. Pe- no. Yeah, okay. First of all, the Spring Bank 10 is horrible. It's not that peated compared to what Octomore? Do you I mean, like what are you literally comparing that to? Because Octomore is probably the pinnacle of I don't understand what it is that people people are like. Oh, well, now Shimon is saying the same thing. Like oh, 
So, yeah, but I mean, you've got, again, William Grant's sons and then not being the same as John Grant. But I think they're all related in some way. And yeah, Dram Dude, compared to an, an Isla Scotch whiskey, sure, it, it might not be as peated as, say, Ardbeg or you know some of those other ones. But I can make the same argument for Brook Lottie. It actually tastes better. It's from the same area. And the peat's not horrendous as opposed to the peat in Springbank, you know? I think most of the stuff from Campbelltown is like that, though. Just not a fan. Huh. But, um, yeah, I know, like, when it comes to peat kind of stuff, it's just, I don't know. I'm still not. It's polarizing. I'm just not there yet. I wish I was. Um, but for me, it's more of the sweet tooth. And then, you know, thanks for going along. But I got this Taconic. I'm guessing you've seen this guy's now on Instagram where it's their maple finished or maple syrup one. Is it finished in maple syrup? Um, I I've heard that they actually um I don't think they add it, but um they definitely. Like, so what happens is they get their normal distillant, then there's a maple farm down the road. They fill that up so they get I guess a maple bourbon, or. That's weird. And then they use, and then they reuse or that barrel back again. So there's some char like you can see the char, and a bit of the flakes floating in here. So it's kind of interesting. I'm really excited to open this just because I've had some very bad experiences with maple bourbon. I even try to make my own. It's pretty difficult. So you to do well just just to balance it right because it's either way too sweet yeah. or it's just not sweet enough and you're like oh it's just a bourbon more sugary that's about it so yeah. I'm very excited a lot of people have been saying it's decent um, but um, I'm definitely categorizing this as a flavored bourbon so if you look my reviews I do a flavored and normal bourbon so we'll see how it, you know stacks up to like the BSB stuff um, the ones that brown sugar bourbons kind of stuff things like that so I'm very interested and they're nice enough to send this you bottle know. so I'm hoping it's good oh. yeah. Fancy. I know. I send it to you. I know. So, uh, Jam Dude, I'm going to take you up on that. I have never tried anything from Hazelburn. Uh, who else? Hazelburn, Long Row. It's all part of one company, right? I believe. I've never tried any of those things. I see them on the shelf every once in a while, and I just pass them up just because of the weirdness factor. But I think I, because of you, I will go ahead, and next time I see one, I'll try it. Ooh, I'll pick it up. that? Oh, Kleinalish? So, I've got Kleinalish. Uh, Kleinalish Fort. 14? Is that the, that, is that the one that won the award, or is that a different one? No, that's Craig, Craig Alecky. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kleinalish, I think that's the one with the wolf on the front. Or the is that the weird cat? No, that's the weird cat. I've got the Kleinalish 14. I have tasted it, and I haven't really gotten into uh, like a formal review for it. But it is good. It wasn't like off-putting, but it wasn't so memorable that I'm like, oh my gosh, I need my life. Oh, it's all Spring Bank. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, now I'll check that out. All righty. All right, guys. I guess that's uh, enough banter for us right now. <laughs> uh, please tune in again uh, next week on uh, Tuesdays to see what next topic. And if you have suggestions, please let us know. And, um, yeah, p- feel free to message us on Instagram. Reply as much as we can. And, uh, yeah, anything else, uh, Wally, for you? Any? The Drinking Caveman on Instagram. On Instagram. I can speak. Yeah, and I just um, did my Facebook page because that's what everyone's doing nowadays. So, um, yeah, please follow me on uh, Facebook. It's uh, also The Drinking Caveman. I'm going to start try, uh, trying to post more reviews on there as well, just like Instagram. And then um, I might have a website coming up soon. So, yeah. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. And then Fancy. Scotch and Sniff, yep. this guy. So, uh, 11,800 followers on Instagram. Going to break 12,000, I'm assuming, sometime relatively soon. I think I'm going to give away a bottle. Ooh. So tell your friends, tell your wife, tell your kids. They out here giving bottles to everybody. Except for your Something kids because like it's uh, drinking age of 21. <laughs> just remember that. That's what I mean. Your adult yeah. children. That's what they call adult them nowadays. Which is, yes. The ones that are living home with you still adults. and, you know, basically living off your money. <laughs> Unless your parents have moved in with you. That is true. All right, guys. Well, that's it for us. Um, again, this is the Whiskey Untitled. Um, if you have any other suggestions, please let us know. And yeah, um, Wally, sign off yet? No. no. McAllen M was not that good, Shimon. Oh, oh sign off. Uh... Pieces. Later, guys. See ya. Boom.